Good day to everybody. Today we are meeting again through Ranavir Associates YouTube channel Tax Talk to discuss social security contribution levy. Now in this the bill is already gazetted on 21st of this month. First we will see the imposition of social security contribution levy that is under section 2. Now the taxable person under this law they have recognized four people as taxable person. Importers, manufacturers, service providers, then wholesale and retail traders. Now in the case of importers they are liable to pay the social responses, uh, in, uh, social security contribution levy on the total value of import that is 100% of the import value. Then in the case of manufacturers they are supposed to pay the uh, uh, social security contribution levy on 85% of the turnover. Then if you we'll take the service providers they are supposed to pay on 100% of their turnover. The service provider includes the land and implements and other services including the financial services. Then wholesale and retail trades uh, in that case there are certain different uh, percentages. If that particular person is acting as a distributor of a locally produced good then he has to pay that uh, company has to pay on 50% of the turnover. In any other case, all other wholesalers and retail traders, they have to pay on 25% of their turnover. Now we will see who is liable. As per the bill, the person who is liable um, uh, is the taxable person. Then effective date. The effective date what they have proposed is 1st July 2022. Then on what they should pay? That is on liable turnover. This liable turnover is as per the second schedule to the B. As I mentioned earlier, on importers on 100% turnover, on manufacturers on 85% of turnover, on service providers including financial services on 100% of the turnover, on uh, locally manufactured good uh, distributors on 50% of the turnover and on other traders on 25% of the turnover. The rate, uh, applicable rate, it is 2.5% on the total turnover. But here the relevant turnover excludes the bad debts, the VAT component and any rebate received under the export development rebate scheme. Those three items, bad debts, VATs and the rebates, to, uh, though this particular rebate to be removed and on the balance turnover they have to pay 2.5% tax. Then how to register? Every taxable person other than the importers, this is not applicable for importers, other than the importer they should get their registration on no before 15th of July 2022. Now if they are having only if they are having a taxable activity as we mentioned there are four categories. Then the threshold. Now for this there is a threshold. Now this threshold is for the registration. If you are turnover for the year 1st July 2021 to 30th June 2022 that Fast one year. If your turnover is exceeding 120 million, then you are supposed to get the registration by 15th of July 2022. In any other case, in future, after 1st July 2022, after 1st July 2022, if 
any quarter's turnover exceeds 30 million rupees, then that particular person should get the registration. Then, if a person meets the threshold over a single isolated transaction, the Commissioner General can ignore that particular transaction for the purpose of registration. Then, if Commissioner General of Inland Revenue recognized with the nature of activity, a person is required to get the registration. Even that particular person is not meeting these two criteria, the threshold, the Commissioner General can register that particular person. Then how to cancel this registration? This cancellation of this registration could be done only after 12 months of the original registration. Only after 12 months of the original registration. Right. Then there should be some valid reason. One reason is cessation of business. If you have stopped your business, then you can get, the, get your registration cancelled. Or if your aggregate turnover for a quarter reduce less than 30 million rupees a quarter and does not exceed 100, 120 million per annum. Right. Per quarter 30 million and all four quarters it should not be more than 120 million. Then Regarding the cancellation, Commissioner General of Indian Revenue can inform such person of the date of the cancellation. That is very important, the date of the cancellation. Then, continuation of liability upon cancellation of the registration. If you will get cancelled your registration, even after that, for the past period, that particular person is liable under this particular act, only for the past period. Then, registered taxable persons due to, to notify the changes. When you are getting the registration, you are in, in giving some information. There are any changes of those information subsequently, you are supposed to notify that to the Commissioner General. The things like name, address, place at which the taxable activity is carried on or carried out. Then, the nature of the taxable activity or the persons authorized to sign the returns and other documents. Then the change of ownership of that activity. If any of these things happen, you are supposed to inform that fact to the Commissioner General of Wilder Revenue within 14 days of that change. Now we will talk about the tax returns. Under this law, you are supposed to file the tax returns on quarterly basis. After ending the quarter, the subsequent month, 20th of the subsequent month, or no, before 20th of the subsequent month, you are supposed to file the return. Then, the assistant commissioner shall issue a notice to a person who failed to submit the return within 14 days of such return. Such notice, that particular person is supposed to file the return if you have failed. Then the assistant commissioner shall acknowledge the receipt of the return only if it receives a, uh, in a proper return. It, if it is only a proper return, he will acknowledge it. Then for the purpose of obtaining full information in respect of the turnover of any registered person, the assistant commissioner may give notice to that particular person. Now, in all ways, it says in writing or by way of electronic means. Failure to comply with the provisions may subject to penalties. Then we will talk about the assessments. Now, we file the return. Um, uh, then we will talk about the assessment. Under the following circumstances, an assistant commissioner may issue assess and issue the notice of assessment. If that particular person failed to furnish a return, he is registered but failed to furnish a return for that for a quarter, then 
fail to pay the levy. Then third, requests to make any alteration or addition to the return already furnished. In, in any of these three cases, the commissioner, assistant commissioner can assess and issue an assessment. Yes. Now we will discuss about the power of the assistant commissioner to determine the open market price. Now sometimes the registered persons might understand the open market price value. Then in a case like that, if the, if the assistant commissioner is in the opinion that he has understated, then he can uh, assess the open market price. There are two incidents. Sold any article or service for a value less than the open market price or entered into a transaction between two associated persons. If it is a situation, then he can decide the open market price. Then we will see disregarding of certain transactions and dispositions. Under the following circumstances, they have given some circumstances. The assistant commissioner may disregard any transaction or disposition and assess the parties. He can issue the assessments. Now we will see those two points. If any transaction reduces or would, um, would have the effect of reducing the amount of levy payable. If the levy payable is reduced or likely to be reduced or that any disposition is not in fact given effect to any disposition the fact is not given. then we will move to next item time limit for additional assessments the time bar it is very important that is governed under section 15 can't raise an assessment by the assistant commissioner after expiration of three years the time bar is three years. From which date? From the end of the rele relevant quarter in respect of which the return is furnished. Three years from end of that particular quarter. Now we will talk about the payments and collection of levy. The accounting basis, it is given, the accounting basis has to be on accrual basis. Then the payment of levy. As I mentioned, the, the levy to be paid on or before the 20th day immediately succeed in the month of the relevant quarter. Then default payment, default payment. Until end of first month, there's a 10% penalty. End of first month, first, for the first month, there's a 10% penalty. Then if it exceeds more than one month, 2% per month or any part thereof for each subsequent period. That means 10%, 12%, 14%, likewise it is increasing. Then we will talk about the collection of levy by the Director General of Customs. As we mentioned, importers also to be paid. If importers are also to be paid, they should the tax to be levied to be collected at the time of customs clearance. Therefore, DGC shall collect from every taxable person in respect of every article imported by such person at the time such article is imported. Then the DGC shall make an endorsement. As he is collecting, he shall make an endorsement on the import uh, invoice, specifying the amount so collected. In the assessment notice, he should mention that. Then appeals, we will talk about the appeals. There are two stages of appeal. One is the first stage, the appeal into the Commissioner General of Inland Revenue. Then the second stage is appeal into the Tax Appeal Commission. First, we will see the appeal into the Commissioner General. Any registered person or any person whose registration has been cancelled, because we said even in the case cancellation for the past period, he is responsible. Therefore, who is dissatisfied with any assessment? 
additional assessment or penalty may appeal against that within 30 days from the from the appeal, from the assessment within 30 days after service in the assessment once you receive the assessment from that day onward within 30 days you are supposed to appeal an appeal is to be acknowledged now then once you submit an appeal it is to be acknowledged by the department within 30 days of receipt of that then every appeal shall be agreed now when they should agree agreed or determined by the commissioner general of inland revenue within the period of two years they are the appeal finalization period is two years from which date from the date on which such appeal is received then i have put a note note please be noted that the process of appealing then appeal hearing is more or less similar to the inland revenue act then the appeal to the tax appeal commission the, the any person aggrieved with the determination of the commissioner general can appeal to the tax appeal commission can appeal to the uh, appeal commission we'll see the fi um, finality of assessment there are no valid appeal to the commissioner general now you receive an assessment but you are not appealing then it is getting finalized or commissioner general has determined the amount of the levy on appeal now commissioner general has de uh, determined the amount that is uh, finalized then it is finalized but you have the option to appeal to the tax appeal commission I have given a note, note, nothing in this section shall prevent an assistant commissioner from making an assessment or additional assessment for any relevant year if it does not involve any matter which has already been determined on appeal. Now in an appeal we determine something no, even after this determination Commissioner General of the Assistant Commissioner can make further assessments or any additional assessment which is not covered earlier. Now we will talk about the recovery of levy. How to recover? Levy includes a penalty. It says a levy is inclusive of a penalty imposed, already imposed. Levy in default shall be the first charge. It is the first charge on all the assets of the defaulter. Where any levy is in default, the Commissioner General shall before proceeding to, the, to recover such uh, levy, shall issue a default notice. Commissioner General should issue a default notice. Where an assessment has been made and the defaulter has not appealed within 30 days that means you have not submitted your normal appeal in a case like that now this is the chance for you to lodge an objection against the default notice you can lodge an objection not appeal objection right then we'll talk about the liability of certain special persons in the case of trustees and executors those trustees and executors are severally and jointly responsible for this levy, to settle the levy. Then regulations, we will talk about how to make regulations. Now even in this case, the minister has given some authority to make certain regulations which is prescribed in the law. Only the things which is prescribed in the law, like in the VAT law, to change the VAT rate. Likewise, here there are certain things which are prescribed. Right. Then every regulation made by the minister shall come into operation on the date of publication in the Gazette. From that day onward or any future date what he has mentioned, from that day it is valid. But within three, three months of that publication, the minister has to put that to the parliament and get it approved. That is very much important. 
Now we will talk about the exempted articles and services. The first one, any article exported by the manufacturer. If the manufacturer himself exported it, that is exempted. Then any article not being a plant machinery fixture imported for the, uh, for, uh, by any person exclusively for the use in or for the manufacture of any article for export. Then any article sold by a taxable person to any exporter that is indirect exports are also exempted. Then any article which is imported for these purposes, temporary imports, we will see what are the purposes. For the display at an exhibition, for temporary usage um, in Sri Lanka for any project. Then for the purpose of repairs of any article, for those things if you will import something that is exempted from that. But with related to these repairs, it says repairs to that article to be carried out in Sri Lanka. Then other articles listed in part 1a and part 1b of the first schedule to the bill. There is a lengthy schedule. There are two lengthy schedules in part 1a and part 1.2. Then the services listed in part 2 of the first schedule to the bill that is listed in part 2 of the first schedule. Those are direct and indirect services are very direct and indirect services with relate to export sector is covered with that. Now for you, now I have not given the list of all these exemptions. Now uh, uh, you can get, uh, you can get this information by referring the bill. The complete List of exemptions, exempted articles and services are given in the first schedule to the bill. The bill highlighting the important provisions has been reproduced in our website. If you want to get it, you can get it downloaded from Ranavira Associates website. I have uploaded that, that, is, that bill where I, we have highlighted the important points. Then it is very easy for you to refer it. Then how to get it? Please find the link posted in the description of this um, session. Uh, uh, you can get it downloaded. Then I would like to give a small conclusion remarks uh, with relate to the rationality of the social security contribution levy. In the angle of the government, first of all we will see the government side. Now when we take the government, everybody knows Sri Lanka our government is in a uh, totally bankrupt situation, heavy financial crisis. May, there are so many reasons. Out of those reasons, one major reason is that the re major reduction of taxes in early 2020. Now, if you will see the effect of this reduction of tax uh, in early 2020, I have given some figures here. Now, the tax revenue to GDP in 2019 we had 12.7%. In 2020 it has come down to 9.1%. In 2021 it has come down to 8.7%. See the reduction of uh, tax income. Now, in the angle, now next we will see now the government needs money, therefore they should charge tax. Okay. Now, next we will see in the angle of the business people and the domestic consumers. Now, with relate to that, today it is a very difficult time for all business people as well as the general public. The cost of living has gone up materially and the increase in prices of goods and services, now as a result of this tax, what will happen? The prices of goods and services will go up in the range of 2.5% to 5% like because in this case there is a cascaded effect. Now next point which I have mentioned is that 
there is a cascaded effect in this particular tax. Now the importer is paying 2.5%. Then if it is a raw material, another manufacturer buy it and manufacture it, manufacture the article. Then along with the, the, the total sale price, disregarding the any input, no input credit, he has to pay another 2.5%. Now then in the, um, uh, in the distribution and the sales point, distributor, now the manufacturer is paying on 85% of the turnover. Then if there is a local manufacturer, local manufacturer's goods distributor, distributor has to pay on 50% of the tax uh, uh, turnover. Then the retailers and wholesalers should pay 25% of the turnover. I think average effect to the market will be about 5% average effect will be about 5%. The cost of goods and services will go up by about 5% because of this tax. Then as I mentioned, the cascaded effect is there. Then for the survival of the business entities, what will happen when the government introduce these tax, they will, they, uh, they should load the tax into the price. Then ultimately, ultimate consumer shall pay uh, that in tax right I have put a general comment some of the provisions of the bill now in this bill when we see this bill some of the provisions are not comprehensive enough and sufficiently covered that's a weakness in this bill now if we'll take the first schedule to the act those are the exemptions now, that schedule is not comprehensive enough. As an example, import of materials, now the various manufacturers, they import materials under TIP scheme, temporary import for export purposes, and also under BOI and various duty-free methods. How it, is, how it is affecting, that is not properly explained. It is explained in certain places, but the wordings are not up to that level. Then providing of some services connected with exports. Now some occasions, now especially IT services and all, some service exporters are there. Then there are some other IT companies who are providing exporting services to a local party. That local other party, like a buying house, they export that service under their name, but they settle the um, the person who uh, the, who has originated that service maybe in foreign currency. Now, in a case like that, how to treat it? That is not properly explained in this law. That's a weakness. Therefore, lot of things to be improved, especially in the exemption schedule. Right. Now, with that, with that. I would like to wind up this session. Thank you very much for your participation for this. Thanks. If you have any comments at any time, we have given our contact. At any time, you all can contact us for further clarification. Anyway, this is only a bill. We have to wait until they pass the final we have to wait until they pass the final act which will take some time anyway the effective date of this act will be first of july first of july only few days more okay thank you